Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks tutorial. Now I hope you're all well and staying safe in these tough times. Now in this video we're going to be talking about doors in Stormworks. We're going to be covering all the custom doors that you can possibly make. Uh, we'll go through most of the possible scenarios. I'll talk to you about some of my favorites and how I actually I build my doors and most of my creations. We'll go over all the logic you'll need to get these set up, what components we'll be using and then we'll actually test them out here in the world of Stormworks. Now, if you're enjoying this videos, comment below anything else you'd like to see in any of my future videos. Why there? Don't forget that like and subscribe button. Make a little bell icon to be notified of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So I said, let's get straight into it and get started with this video. So getting started, we're back here at the creator base. Now I have quite a few doors and sliding doors here in front of me. Now what we're doing is we'll be going through all the different types that we have built up. These cover most of the types of doors that people use in their creations. Uh, once we have a look at them and understand the differences between all of them, uh, we'll go through the logic that you'll need to actually use every type of door. And I'll go over a few of my tips and tricks to actually use these doors. Uh, now the first type we had uh, that we ever got really in Stormworks was just this normal door. As you can see, these were the very basic ones. Uh, I think there was this size, and then we also had a three by six one, which was like a small hatch that you could go and use. Uh, these are quite basic. They just have an on off signal and they go and open and close. Uh, that's pretty much all about those. They, they are quite basic. Uh, the next ones we had were the docking doors, uh, exactly the same as these ones, just a little bit bigger because you have the outside area to them. Uh, we also have a small variant of this docking door. Uh, these were originally designed to actually dock together, like to fit into each other and become a sealable body. Um, so it was pretty cool, these ones. Uh, I don't see them being used that often anymore, to be honest, because you can't really add anything to them. Um, and then we have the custom door frames and the custom doors. We, this, when this got added, this was a really cool feature. Uh, this allowed us to build any size of door that we wanted to. Uh, it also came with its own hinge and it came with a locking mechanism to actually make it sealable. Um, before that, we only had these two types of doors which limited us to either a small hatch or a large hatch or a small docking door or a large docking door. If we wanted anything larger or smaller than that, we had to use just regular blocks with a, with a pivot. These are the most common ones we always will see. Um, the only problem with these is they're not sealable. So if you had any type of like door, uh, garage door, for example, they wouldn't be sealable. So when they added these special docking doors in, or special, sorry, special door hinges and uh, pieces, this really changed a lot of things and made us a, uh, gave us a lot of more options at least for sliding doors and big doors in this game which is really cool. Um, moving on to the first type and the most basic type of sliding door that you have, um, you have pretty much the frame and then you have a rail system. It just works that simply, it goes and opens, it doesn't fold, it doesn't do anything, it just goes and literally just goes along that rail and that's pretty much as basic as you can get with sliding doors. Uh, so we'll look at the logic for that one. The next type we have is a sliding door that actually is flush with its body. So you can see here in my example it's completely flush with its body. It does actually go and push out so you can see here we've got a mechanism that goes and pushes out and then it actually goes and slides along its rail. So I'll look at the logic for that too and I'll show you how that works which is quite nice. And then there's the third or the last type of door that I use on most of my creations uh, and this is exactly the same process it's a push out and slide system however it's got a special lock built into it and I'll talk about that lock at the end or of this video uh, and I'll tell you a little bit of a couple of tips and tricks that I know uh, to use with these sliding doors so with that all said um, let's get into it let's go back to our workbench here and let's start actually building with these and testing out and making sure we understand how the logic works for all these different types of doors uh, now the first thing we're going to need is a battery because we're here in advanced mode we have to have a battery so I'm just going to go and grab a small little battery and I'm going to put one actually let's go and grab a large one uh, just over here just to be sure we don't know how much power we're going to need so I'm just going to go and start working on the first door now the first door is a very basic door you can either use any type of on off signal as you can see here if we go over to the logic it has a, literally an open or close that's it whether you want to use a, um, a push button if you want to use a toggle button if you want to do a pulse signal it's listen it's completely up to you uh, for the example right now I'm just gonna go and put a simple push button over here we're gonna get that connected up and we're gonna get some electricity to it okay so we're gonna connect electricity to our door and then our door to our push button that simple that easy we can go and spawn the creation in 
you can see here if we go and stand next to it we it goes and opens that easy that simple with that one the next type is the docking door as you can see once again if we go onto it it has electricity so we'll get that connected up if we start looking at the different logic for it you'll notice this one has a whole bunch more of logic on it okay first off you can see is on off send so you can actually send signals through this docking door to another docking door you can also receive an on off signal from it okay uh, along with that there you can send a number you can receive a number so it's kind of like a little bit of a radio system of some sort uh, we also get an open and close we get a magnet because this actually has a magnet that can go and toggle or go and connect to another one of these doors okay and then lastly you also get a connected status okay so if you go and connect this this door to another one of those doors you'll get that status okay so more or less works the same way you can either use a toggle button, you can use a push button, you can use anything you want, um, but it just takes a simple on off signal to the door itself. You need to go and give it some electricity and you can see here if we go and spawn that in and we go and open it, you will notice that it goes and opens. Okay, it's a push button so mine reacts when you're pushing it, etc. One thing to note is that if you do not have electricity on both of those doors, okay, on these first two types of doors, so let's go and remove the electricity. These doors will actually freely open, okay? They can literally, you can go and push them and move them as you want to. You can see here, I can go and open that door with no button and no power required, okay? So please do be aware of that. If you do not have electricity in your build or if you lose power, those doors become free and they're not sealable anymore. Uh, we can go on to the next type of door, which is the uh, custom door pieces and custom door wedges at least. Now with this, it also requires power, of course, just like any of these other doors because we're here in advanced. Now there is a couple different buttons on this. This is the first door that we see that requires a rotation. Okay, it doesn't require on and off anymore. It requires a one or a minus one to open in either direction. Okay. So it's up to you on how you want to do this. Along with that, it also gives you feedback back to you depending you, depending on what its rotation is. Okay, So if it's out, it will give you a certain number. If it's in, it gives you a certain number, etc. Along with that, you also get an option to add a lock on. You can see here, we can physically go and lock the door and we get indicated to tell us that it is completely sealed. Now, you can use any different ways of working with this lock as you want to. You can use a microprocessor, you can use some number gates, it's up to you. For the purpose of this video right now, I'm just gonna be using a small keypad, okay? I'm gonna go grab a small keypad so I can give it a number. Okay, so you can see here, I'm just gonna go and give it a number just over there. Along with that, I'm also going to go and put a toggle button and that way I'm going to tell it to be sealable. Okay, so you can see here, toggle button, I'm gonna tell it to lock. It's gonna lock its door. And lastly, we're going to add a light on to tell us that it has been physically gone and locked. Okay, so once again, from that seal state, we're gonna to go to that light switch. All we have to do once again is go and give it some electricity to all the different components. We can go and spawn it in here. Now, if we go over, you can see straight away, this is locked. It's completely sealed and it's good to go. If we press the button here, it's still locked. We can take it off, it's still locked. Okay, that's because the actual door is closed right now. If we go and put a negative one in here, for example, you will see the light goes off and the door goes and opens inwards. If we go and give it a one, it's going to go and go the complete opposite direction. Okay, so you have a couple different options with this. You can do it in, you can do it out, you can make large ones, you can make small ones, you can use locks, you don't have to use locks, it's completely up to you. I do like these ones because you can build them in any way and form. You can add windows to them, uh, although you don't have that much space to do it. Uh, you can handles and buttons, all kinds of different things to them. So I do like those ones. The next type we have is just the most common one, which is using a pivot block. You can see here, I've got a simple pivot block attached to the door. The nice thing about these ones is we can actually start baking things into it because we can actually, these are just regular blocks. We can literally go and replace them with whatever we want to. So I'm going to put a push button there. I can go and grab a handle if I want to and I can go and put a handle on the door frame, it's up to me. Okay, that's the nice thing about using these. The only problem with these ones is that they do not seal. There is no sealable blocks on these doors at all. 
This will allow water go to go completely through the door. Okay, so I do not recommend you use this anywhere on a ship if you want to seal an area. It's up to you once again, but these ones allow the most amount of customization. However, they are not sealable. Now how to work them, pretty straightforward once again. Uh, you'll see here that if we go over to our logic, uh, we have just a simple pivot which takes a number value. Okay, once again, I'm going to go and grab our little keypad here. You can use switch boxes, you can use a microprocessor. It's up to you on how you want to do that. I'm just going to grab that simple block keypad there and I'm going to go and let's go and give it some electricity and we can go and spawn it in. Okay, if we run over to it now again, you'll notice that we give it a one, it's going to go and open for us. And if we go and give it a negative one, it's going to go open in the opposite direction. If we wanted to close it, we could give it a zero value. Yeah. So these are the fun ones. These ones allow you to do a lot of different things. Okay. So those are pretty much the four different types of doors that we have so far. We then start moving into sliding door territory. Okay. So you, as I said earlier, we have the most basic type of door, which is just literally goes and slides on its own axis. It is not flush with its body. It's actually exposed. It's one block out. It's the I don't like it, but it's the most simplest sliding door that you can think of. Um, one recommendation here is um, you can obviously use push buttons. You could use uh, numbers. It's up to you. They do require you to obviously have a um, a little one or minus one or anything else but recommendation here is i don't like these reason why is they require electricity okay when you use these they require electricity so when you want to keep them shut you have to give them a one which means you have to be giving them power which is not a nice thing and i'll tell you at the end later on how we overcome that but just to actually understand how these work uh literally once again give it a number value like i've done right now make sure it's got electricity so we're going to connect it up to our battery over there and literally go and spawn it in okay uh we can go and spawn it in here if we go and give it a one you'll see probably nothing's good. okay so now it's going to go and open Great, we can go and get through the door, we can do what we want to do, etc. Okay, and if we want the door to close, you can't give it a zero. If you give it zero, that means the slide does nothing. You have to physically go and give it a minus one. And as soon as it's using minus one, that is using power. This is why I don't like this solution. Okay, because this, this, if you have a lot of these on the, on your creation, like let's say a train where you have like six or ten of them, this eats power up completely. Okay, uh, but that's just a basic way. The next uh, nice way of doing this is to have your actual sliding door flush with your creation. Okay, you can see here, this is completely flush. Now what we require this to do is when you require to push out and then slide backwards. In order for that to happen, you have to have two of these different sliders on here you can see we have one rail system pushing it out and another rail system actually going backwards and forwards recommendation here is instead of building this rail system like here that we have instead of building it outwards like this for the tracker track to run across it i recommend you do it the opposite way you build the track into the door and then you actually have the gripper or the actual motor of it attached to the to the body of this thing that's pushing it out that way you don't actually have to have a big rail system on the outside of your creation just a recommendation there once again it's up to you on how you want to build these these work in exactly the same process okay you will need to go and give them power so we're going to go and give them power once again just over here and we can give that all power you will need to give it some numbers so we're going to do the pusher first that pushes it out and then the slider that goes and slides it along okay i'll show you a cool way and some cool logic to actually get that done a little bit more cleaner in a few seconds but let's go and test it make sure it works so we have the thing that pushes it out so if we go and give this a one it should push it out like that and then we give it a one is it open yep there we go now you can see it slides along okay so that's now stuck out one but it does mean we have free access and then when it gets closed so we go and give it a minus one and we give this a minus one it's now completely flush with your creation okay which is really nice i like this now the logic which i recommend you use for that is quite simple instead of using keypads or number blocks and things like that okay the easiest logic that you use is 
ideally a push button or a composite signal or something like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for this. However, you need to translate that. Now, as I said earlier, you can either use a um, microprocessor to do all this logic. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to actually build the logic out here for you. I'm not going to be going into the microcontroller. I'm going to be doing it right here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go and turn that button. When we push that button, we want this to be pushed out and we want it to push along. So we need to give it two numbers. Okay, so you can see here, I'm going to go and give some switch boxes. Okay, let's go and give it some switch boxes. Okay, that way we can actually switch between one and minus one. Okay, so we have two switch boxes here, one for the pusher and one for the slider. We're also going to get some constant numbers. Okay, so let's go and grab some constant numbers. Okay, we'll grab a one and a minus one. Okay, so let's click on it here. We'll make it a one and we'll make it a minus one. Okay, so for example, when we turn this on, we're turning both of these door controllers on here. Okay. When we turn it on, we want one. So we want it to open to go to both of those controllers. We're going to go and say, hey, when you're on, take that one and send it over to both our pusher and our slider. When you're off, so when this is not being pushed, we want this minus one to go to the off and go to this pusher and the slider. Okay, so this is the very basic. We're going to improve on that logic in a couple seconds, but let's just go and test that out. Okay, I might have forgotten to give power to my button. I did. So make sure you go and put electricity to everything as always, guys. So let's go and give that some electricity quickly and go and spawn that back in. So now we go and push that button. You will see it goes and pushes out and slides in. If I release the button, it will go and close itself and go back. However, you saw what happened is that it gives the one to both the pusher and the slider at the same time. Okay, which means if I press that button, the door wants to slide outwards and also push outwards at the same time. So it kind of gets all stuck and jangled. You can see that it's trying to go in, but it can't because it's still sliding back. So you want to try and delay it a little bit. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using capacitors to do that. So go into your inventory, go and write capacitor, and you'll notice here we have two, we have a capacitor, and we're going to add two of them on here. Okay, so you can see we have two capacitors. Okay. The first thing we want is we want the pusher. So we want the first part, this part here to be pushed out first. Okay, so we want that to happen instantaneously. However, when this is starting backwards, we don't want it to go in. We want it to delay that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our capacitor and we're going to say, hey, how long does it take for you to work? Well, it takes you zero seconds for you to actually push out. How long does it take you to discharge? How long are you constantly giving you that signal through? Well, let's go and give it, I don't know, let's go and give it four seconds. Okay, you'll see this in a couple of seconds. All you want to do now is go to the other capacitor, do the complete opposite. So go and give it four seconds for the charge time. It's probably way too long. And give it zero seconds for its discharge time. Okay, and you'll see that in a couple seconds, what's going to happen. All we're going to do is we're literally going to go and take off our two push button so our push button to start the actual door we're going to send them over to our capacitators and then from our capacitator we're going to send them over to our switch boxes so once again to repeat that we push the button it sends our signals to our two capacitors the first capacitor on the left hand side is that it goes instantly through it tells it to work straight away however it keeps sending that signal for four seconds the second capacitor says hold on you need to wait four seconds and then I'm going to send your signal through. Okay, which is a little bit different way. Once it gets those signals, it then goes and pushes it out and then it goes and slides at the same time. Make sure once again, your electricity is all done. Go and spawn the creation in. We jump all the way over to the side here. We press that button. Watch what happens. Door pushes out. It waits four seconds and then it's going to push backwards. When we let go of that button, it's going to slide going to wait four seconds and then it's going to push back inside you can tweak this to however you want this way you get a nice clean action of the door really cool system here the only issue with this is once again this still requires power this is draining power of that battery as we speak another thing is if you have a creation that moves quickly this door can still be moved I can physically go and push it because I'm fighting that pivot. Okay, so I can go and literally keep on pushing it. It starts bugging out and so on and so forth. So the easiest way to rectify that is a simple little trick. 
okay to stop the battery from draining okay and we're gonna sh prove this battery let's go and give it a small one right over here okay so we're gonna test this battery here we're gonna let's give it a dial okay this way we can tell you how much battery we have how much we've used etc okay so we're just gonna go and do that give it some battery and we're gonna go and do our door now our door is set up exactly the same way i still have exactly the same system as we did earlier on the back of this okay exactly the same so we need the same logic for this so literally i'm just gonna go and steal all this logic okay because i know it works okay so let's just go and steal all that logic here i'm just gonna copy it i'm gonna throw it over here and i'm gonna paste it i'm just gonna grab myself a push button because we need a push button obviously to open this door so let's go and put a push button down great once we have that let's go and give some electricity to all our components here okay i haven't told you the secret source just yet we'll get into that in a few seconds but let's just go and connect everything up everything should be connected up quite nicely here we can go and give our push button to our two capacitors go and give our pusher some power etc etc okay they should all be working okay and we're going to go and test and see how much battery this actually goes and uses Okay, for example, we're going to delete that for now. I'm not going to tell you what that is just yet. Okay, so, oh look, that's going down already. That's using power as we speak. Okay, go and push the button. Door's going to open. Once again, more power is being drained. Okay, oh, sorry, I need to hold that button. Okay, more power is being drained. Door's going to open. Great, let's release it. Door's going to close. More power is being drained etc okay so solution to that is you can kind of already saw what i had on i have a gripper and a slider on it okay gripper and sliders are really cool they work kind of like as a lock system okay now you can see here we have a gripper and we have a slider okay so we have the slider already on the door itself now you could put this here you could put it on the inside you could put it on the frame you could put it absolutely wherever you want to all you have to do is you have to have one on the door itself and you need another piece on your actual body or on your frame. So you can see here, I'm going and putting the actual gripper on the frame itself, okay, just over here. And the easiest thing to get this done is firstly, give it some electricity as always, okay. What we're going to do is to get this lock system working is we're gonna say, hey, if I press this button, we want the connector to be released. If I'm not pressing that button, we want the system to be locked. So we're gonna go and get a not block over here. Yeah, so we're gonna put a not block down. Pretty simple. You can see here, when I'm not pressing this button, I want it to lock the door, okay? That way we shouldn't now be able to actually go and push this anymore. Okay, so let's go and press it, make sure it still opens. Yeah, it still opens, happy days. Wait for it to open, cool, wait for it to close. You can see it's gotten closed there. Okay, cool. Can I push this now? almost impossible to push that okay this is a locked shut now okay in comparison to this door which you can see is is really easier to push okay in comparison to this one which is not really moving at all okay another cool thing is that with these okay with these doors you can notice that we're locking it with the system okay we're completely locking it shut with the system you can add some extra features onto those doors if you want to. Now, this is completely up to you, but you can actually cut the electricity from the door. Because you're locking it now, when it's back in place, you can actually go and cut the electricity from it. And to do that, pretty simple. Go and look at your electricity components just down here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna go and grab one of our relays. Okay, so you can see a relay just over here. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to tell the system, hey, if you're getting a signal from this push button, okay, if you're getting a signal from that push button, we want to give electricity to all of our components. Okay, so we're going to go and give electricity to all of our components. We're going to just disconnect all of this. Okay, we're going to give electricity to, yeah, let's get take it away from this. Okay, and we'll give it to that. Okay. So the only thing that's getting direct power from the battery now is literally that push button. When we push the push button, we're telling the system to give everything electricity. When we let go of that push button, it's gonna cut all the electricity and we still need that door to close. So what we're going to do is once again, we're gonna go and use a capacitator. 
okay you can either use a capacitor or you can use a delay block it, listen this is up to you you can delay the signal if you want to it's completely up to you here i'm using capacitor for this example okay we're going to place one down and we're going to give this on signal to that capacitor Okay. From the capacitor, we're going to go back to that electrical relay. We're going to tell the system, hey, when you press it, it's going to instantly go through. However, discharge time is going to take four seconds because that's how long it takes us to close the door. Give it an extra 1.1 second just for good measures. Okay. And we're going to check everything is working, of course. And we're also going to see our electricity and see if our electricity is going down as much as the last time it was. Okay. So you can see here, oh, look, we're filling on our electricity. Happy days. Can we actually move the door? Oh wait, no, we can't. We can't move the door anymore. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? Okay, so what we can now do is let's open the door. And look, the door goes and opens. We're using some electricity. The door's gonna continue opening. Great, we're still using electricity. Great, you can see it going down. We let go. We'll go and close itself. Cuts the electricity off. And this door is no longer using any electricity. Yes, you do have to have a gripper hidden somewhere here. It's up to you where you want it. But that does cut down on your electricity usage. So that's pretty much about it. Um, I think that covers most of the different types of doors and sliding doors that you have in Stormworks. Uh, obviously, let me know in the comments, guys, if you can think of any other ideas or any other types of doors that we have here in game. Uh, as I said, we still uh, there are still the small variants of these three types that I didn't speak about. Um, but yeah, these are the majority of them. Hopefully you found this tutorial or video quite helpful uh, and it helps answer a lot of questions that some of you have. So that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.